Good evening everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another weather forecast. In today's weather update, California and the Intermountain West is getting some soaking rainfall while the Deep South is about to get their fair share of heavy rainfall and some flood concern. Not only that, temperatures are about to skyrocket to well above average territory as daily records, if not monthly records, make a scene into late January and early February. So let's just jump straight into the video because there is a little bit to talk talk about, especially for the West and the Deep South, as you all are going to get some pretty intense rainfall from time to time with the chances of ice accumulation. So let's kind of look at the European model for this afternoon, where it's raining and where it's not, and exactly where it's snowing too, right? So over the Great Lakes, we do got some lake effect snow that is continuing. Why is that? Because we got some cold air advection moving over the warm lake waters. Not only that, we do have quite a bit of rainfall over California where we need it most, right? This is going to help the drought situation. Well, we're not in a drought, but whatever we can get is what is going to help even further to keep the drought from developing. So across Oregon into Southern California, lots of green indicating lots of rainfall. But things are going to change for the matter because all that wet weather is going to be moving into the deep south. Look at this. For Monday morning, it's raining across California. Also, for the higher elevations, we got some snow. But look at this pink on your screen. You know what that is? That's freezing rain. So, rain that freezes on contact with the ground surface. So, if you're in, say, Oklahoma, if you're in Arkansas, if you're in Missouri, yep. Freezing rain is coming back into the forecast, and you know it only takes about five hundredths of an inch to cause a lot of problems, but that ice will go away as temperatures do warm up throughout the day into the evening hours. So you're going to go seeing some freezing rain to seeing some rain, so that means rain on top of freezing rain is going to lead to a little bit more flood concerns because you're melting all that water that was once frozen. Over the Great Lakes in the northern, or yeah, the upper Midwest, I should say, here for Tuesday, yes, you're also going to get your fair share of snow and freezing rain, but guess what? This is the end of it because the pattern is going to be changing. As we go into Wednesday, into Thursday, you can see um, still quite a bit of rainfall for the deep south, for the southeast, but also no more snow for the Great Lakes, so... Say goodbye to snow and say hello to the rain. And if we get enough rain, there could be certainly some flood problems. Some ice jam up um, concerns as well on some of these larger rivers. More rain for California as another storm takes aim. This one doesn't look as significant, but hey, we can take every little bit that helps. And then by the time we go into Thursday, that all ends for Cali. But look at this. For the eastern seaboard, more rain is coming for you as well because of an atmospheric river. And then that will be the last of it as we go into early next week. Except for the deep south, you might see more rounds of rainfall. And of course, don't want to forget you all up in the Pacific Northwest. You're not going to see a whole lot of big storms, but certainly enough to keep the weather pattern active for you. Now, how much rainfall could you see out of these storms over the next 10 days or so? This is the national blend of models. So this is basically the super blend, combining all of the global computer models, all of the high resolution models into a main modeling system. So when we take a look here at that forecast from this model, you can see for Louisiana, for Mississippi, for Texas, yeah, I mean, five to almost eight inches of rainfall. My goodness, that's a lot of water, right? That's why there is going to be some flood concerns down there for the deep south. So you're going from cold and, you know, not so wet to warm and wet instead because of the El Nino that's out there right now for the uh, Midwest or for the not Midwest, but for the Intermountain West, I should say, for Oregon, for Washington, for California. Yeah, the additional storms that we're going to get, we're still expecting to see additional couple of inches there. You can find out more on the Sacramento Weather uh, YouTube page uh, after this video has been, uh, after watching this video, you can go check that out. Link in the description below this video. 
but also for um, portions of the higher elevations here of Washington, you might get an additional six to eight inches of rainfall. While rainfall is good, it's not good when it freezes on contact. And look at these ice accumulations over southeastern Oklahoma, over northwestern portion there of Arkansas and southern Missouri, according to the European model, you might see as much as a tenth to a quarter of an inch of ice, and some areas might even see four tenths of an inch. That will be enough to really lead to a lot of power outages, down trees, infrastructure damage as well. Looking at the GFS model, the global forecasting, the American model, anywhere between about a tenth to a quarter of an inch with some areas, maybe as much as three tenths of an inch. And on we go to the Canadian model here. Uh, similar amounts, but especially over Arkansas there, you might see as much as a half an inch of ice if this all comes together perfectly. Over southeastern Oklahoma, for say Illinois, you might get a tenth to a quarter of an inch. This is more than enough ice to lead to widespread power outages, impossible road travel, air travel, uh, flight cancellations are certainly possible. And looking at the NAM model, anywhere between a tenth to a quarter to maybe even three tenths of an inch of ice. By the way, that is all the way through early Monday into Tuesday next week. So keep that in mind as well. So early week, not going to be pretty for a lot of commuters at all. So now to the temperature anomaly forecast, the pattern is going to be changing. I'm not trying to laugh here, folks. I'm not trying to get that in the way of this video, but oh my gosh, wait until you see what how big of a warm-up you're about to see. So, looking at the ensemble, this is from the Euro, by the way, and yeah, the Euro doesn't mess around very much, and you can see here, it's backtracked three to four days out from now, so Tuesday and a Wednesday. Look how much warmer it actually gets. That's why we're going to see the freezing rain, right? Because we have moisture aloft in the form of snow, melts to rain, and then it freezes right on contact when raindrops hit the surface, and we call that freezing rain. And it's all because of the temperature profile. But things are only going to get warmer. And to the point where freezing rain is not going to likely happen. By middle of next week, by the 25th and the 26th of January, look how much warmer it gets. Big time warm up, okay? Say goodbye to the darn hurtful cold air that you all have been having and it doesn't get any uh better than this it's going to only get warmer perhaps portions of canada here on the european ensemble forecast looking at temperatures anywhere between 30 to almost 40 degrees above average so yeah arctic air out get out of here arctic air not going to even happen and then by days 13 to 14, we're still going to have some really warm temperatures. Look at this. Over Minnesota, the northern tier of the United States perhaps might see temperatures anywhere between 25 to almost 30 degrees above average. And I want to uh, make note of something. This is the European Ensemble. 50 one members that run the operational ensemble forecast and this is a high average um showing up here over the northern tier so this means our probabilistic forecast calls for a very likelihood that you will see above average temperatures for the next 15 plus days possibly into early or mid february what does this look like on the temperature or the actual temperature forecast well when we go forward here no more cold air temperatures are definitely going to be warming up across the upper midwest into tuesday and even into wednesday no more single digits you can't find any of that here in the united states maybe in the higher elevations there but you have to go all the way up to into hudson bay and some of those temperatures are not even that cold at all compared to say uh, portions of the midwest that you're experiencing right now by next weekend, this is really what catches my eye. Temperatures during the day, below the mountain ranges here of the Rockies, other than the Rockies, right? So you go into the northern tier, temperatures probably going to be above freezing on Saturday. And look at this, for the deep south, temperatures in the 60s, so definitely above average there. Even for Indiana and Ohio, well above average temperatures, and this continues all the way into the January the 30th and the 31st, perhaps. Some areas here in the 50s. How about that? And this is on the European Ensemble forecast. Big time warm up. 
I mean, you have to go all the way up there to latitude 60 degrees north to find temperatures below freezing, even during the day and even during the night. Not going to cool off all that much. And this really is concerning when you think about it. Look at this. Even into, say, um, J February the 3rd. Look at those temperatures in the 50s, maybe some mid-50s in Indiana. Big time difference of what you're seeing right now. Look at that. Just a remarkable difference in temperatures. The reason why this is going to be the case is when we look at our atmospheric forecast here, here's a look at the 500 millibar height chart. The color shading is anomalies and the actual lines are your height contour. And so when we go forward here, definitely a lot of ridging across the northern tier into Canada, into Hudson Bay. A positive PNA forecast looks likely, and that's why it's going to definitely be warm in Canada. This is in agreement with the ensembles showing an overall pattern that yields a lot of ridging in the Midwest and the Canadian border into Canada, meaning temperatures will be a lot or will be well above average and not much big storms to contend with. So back to the inactive weather pattern, I should say, on the good side because it's been active enough over the last couple of weeks. Well, anyways, that's going to sum it up for today's detailed weather discussion for January the 20th, 2024. As always, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you did like today's video. And also be sure to leave a comment in the section below. Let me know how you did like today's video and what you want me to do next in the next video. But anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll be back with you more soon.